One of the things I love about Park is the number of stories that I get a chance to hear as you guys figure out what it means to love God and be engaged where you are. One of the stories I got was from a woman who walked over the line of faith here at Park several years ago. And she's in her job and she begins to see her job very differently because she's now a new follower of Jesus. She got a new boss. And as she had this new boss, she started to think about what's her role in her engagement with this new boss that she has. She did a study called Connecting God in Work and began to think about her workplace differently as a result of this study. Around the time that she began to become a follower of Christ and got this new boss, she put on her door a two-inch Jesus fish with a cross inside of it. Can you take that tin thing out? That, okay, sounds like I'm in a trash can. Thank you. A two-inch Jesus fish with a cross inside, and she put it on the inside of her door. And the HR department, the head of the HR department, came to speak to her about something else. And as he was walking out the door, he saw this, and he turned around and said to her, I'm a Jewish man, and that greatly offends me. And he said to her, I want you to take this down. And this new follower of Christ said, well, I need to pray about that. So she called me, and we talked about it on the phone. And one of the things we talked about, what does it mean to honor those that God's placed in authority over you? So she removed it from her door and she put it on her computer. A little bit later, her new boss took everyone on his team out to lunch and he took this woman out to lunch and knew that this woman was a follower of Christ. And it's interesting to hear him tell the story because he now goes to park. He saw the credibility of her life and the way in which she did her life and did her job, that she did it well. She was competent, incredible in her life. They were sitting at lunch and her boss began to ask her questions about God. He is not a God follower in any way, shape, or form. But he began to ask her questions and he asked her a question at one point that she couldn't answer, but he, uh, uh, he excused himself to go to the men's room and while he was in the men's room, she picks up the phone and calls a friend of hers who's older in the faith and said, can you help me with this answer? And so when he came back to the table, then she was able to respond. One time the two of them were together for an event on a Saturday and the two of them stuck around a little bit longer and this boss looked at her and said, can I ask you another question? And asked her this pretty tough question, kind of like, what would Jesus do in this situation? And so this woman who goes to park said, well, you can ask him yourself. And the second thing I would say is you need to forgive this person. And because of these ongoing conversations that the woman that was going to park and became a follower of Christ lived credibly and was competent in her job, she had this long dialogue with her boss, and her boss eventually came to park, and he became a follower of Christ and brought his girlfriend, who's now his wife, and she became a follower of Christ. And in a moment, I'll read you something he wrote about his business. But it's all those things working together that make us as followers of Christ Incredible in the marketplace. Your lifestyle, your level of competency, and then your courage of engagement. So let's take a look. I'm just going to hit two broad things here. I'm going to look at what the theological implications are and then what are the implications of this theology. How some of us see our jobs obviously does not align with how God would have us see our work we might like our work, but we see our work for many of us as a means to an end. It's not as true anymore because the marketplace, it's really hard to change jobs like it once was. But for many of you, especially in your 20s and 30s, you kept your resume in your drawer, and as soon as you got tired of your job, you just went and found another one. It was just a means to an end, just a quick way to raise money. You had to do it anyway. Might as well find a place I like, and who cares what else I bring to the table. That's my job. It allows me resources to do other things. For some of us, we pour everything into our job and we're workaholics and they consume us and they dominate, dominate us and frankly, they identify who we are. We get our identity from our job. We have set our sights on a career path and we do everything we can do to get to that very place. And some of us are just bored with our jobs. We just see them as a necessary evil. So how does God want us to view our jobs? All good work is worship. All good work is worship. God doesn't separate work from worship, secular from sacred. We do. Many of us look at my job going, Jackson, your job, that job is sacred. That's what you do. That's the sacred work. 
And what I do is a secular job, and then when I get to volunteer for my church in whatever avenue it might be, in the church itself or outside, engaged in one of our partner ministries, that's when I'm engaged in, in the sacred. When, when I'm having a conversation about spiritual things, that's when I'm having a sacred conversation. And I would say to you, no, God doesn't separate that in our life. All of our life is sacred. Our work is a sacred place. 